So let's save the historical stuff, a lot of the historical stuff for that Q&A, which we'll okay. get a recording of and we can use later. But what I'm, what I'm <coughs> most interested in is what the band is doing today. As far as, uh, I mean, how many albums? Is it nine albums now? <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's been an interesting you know, evolution in the band where now that Super Fuzz Big Muff is, is the sem seminal grunge album and back when it came out not a lot of people noticed not a lot of people cared but now you're going to be going on tour and playing it um, in its entirety now we've done that we've already done it before. Uh, yeah, um, we did that at, at a All Tomorrow's parties in London like was that four years ago now or three? Probably something like that. Yeah. And then we also did it in LA with the Melvins and they did Houdini. See, that's that's cool because everybody seems to be doing that now. I mean, you know, in Canada here, a band called Our Lady Peace has gone on the road and they've played their two big records uh, in their entirety. You know, Pavement's doing it. Uh, who else? It was all, it was kind of very, from All Tomorrow's Parties, pretty good, you know, twist on how to get people to come see old bands, I think, you mm -hmm. know. Um, you know, it's kind of nostalgic and, you know, you don't want to get caught in the, that kind of rut necessarily, but uh, I understand the appeal of it. You know, I was really excited when the Stooges were going to do Funhouse. So, you know, yeah. I can't really <laughs> diss people for like, you know, wanting well, us you know, to do Super Fuzz when I'm like, I'm really excited. Oh, I'd love to see that band do that record. <laughs> the Stooges with Ron, they were going to do the first two records anyway, and that was going to be it. So. Yeah, but still. And it, it, I think it's, it's, it's also reinforcing the, the, the whole nature, the whole idea of the album as a complete piece of work rather than the a la carte thing that we've seen since the introduction of MP3s and the iPod. Which is weird because Super Fuzz Big Muff was just a six song EP when it came out. Yeah, so now then... they've expanded it to like, <laughs> uh, it was originally they asked us to do Super Fuzz Big Muff plus early singles. And when we did it, we did it more in a chronological order instead of like the way it was laid out on that. Like that compilation tracks and seven inch records and things like that that came out in the first eight months of the band basically. You know. So is, are there any plans? I mean, it's been what, two years since the last record? It's uh, almost two years since it yeah. came out. Yeah. So would there be any plans to do anything more? Yeah. We're working, We're on, working on writing songs right now, um, uh, whenever we can, well, <laughs> where which are gets you, harder. Where are you in the band's evolution in terms of sound? Because you, know, you went low and fuzzy, and then you know, at one point you were almost kind of, kind of jazzy, and there were female backing vocals and synthesizers. So where are you now in, in, as, as an artist in making music? We, we definitely made two records that were bigger productions and we brought more people in three couple. three I guess yeah yeah, yeah the last food. Warner Brothers record but that was still kind of more stripped down in a certain way but uh the last record was as stripped down as we could get you know and as raw yeah, I didn't as even we play could guitar get. on it yeah um, you didn't? no no it was it was a uh, kind of a little experiment that was working out well for well, us that was in so. what four days yeah yeah it, yeah. Was, it was done really quickly and probably we wrote the songs really quickly too <laughs> we, we wrote the songs quickly that was kind of the theory was just to as we were practicing, try to just have Mark on a microphone babbling gibberish at us, so we could try to come up with get songs completed quicker than just sometimes we just get stuck jamming for too long on a riff, you know. And uh, so it worked actually, it worked really well. Like we kind of dove in and started writing songs quickly. So I think even this record, I don't know what it's going to sound like, but it seems like we're coming up with stuff pretty quickly, and we're not, you know. I, I hate laboring over a rock and roll song. I think it's just absolutely ridiculous you know it should be quick if, if a band can't write a record you know in a at the very least a few months of random practices you know like if you know get hanging out I, I think we're well beyond a few months of random practice well not before. not really if you think about it you know um, if you really, moved a little bit closer yeah we haven't yeah I, I live in a different city now but well, where are you I'm in Portland and where are you Seattle. The rest of us are all in Seattle. Well, that's three hours bad. away no yeah. but no but it's a six it's, hour it's round six, trip six hour round trip for me to drive up and back you know and, uh, since we have jobs and families and things like that at this point, um, you know, it's kind of a commitment. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, we practice at Mark's house. <laughs> it's, not, it's a commitment for Mark's wife. <laughs> yeah. So this isn't really a whole lot different than uh, 1982 in terms of rehearsing in somebody's house and just yeah. getting together and hammering yeah, yeah, yeah. songs out. Sure. Yeah. And me and Mark. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> It's kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and beautiful. Well, you beautiful know, and sad. You know, with, with everything that happened in the Pacific Northwest, with everybody that's come and gone, um, I mean, you're one of the few constants. I mean, there's Pearl Jam, Soundgarden's back, and there's you. 
And the Melvins, I guess. Melvins are definitely a constant. Yeah. I was I was sad with, to see the Fastbacks go because they were yeah. a link to the the earlier Seattle punk scene, you know. And right. they finally hung it. I was like, damn it. <laughs> well, it was kind of cool to see uh, Buzz finally get a record on the top 200 album charts. That, that, that's crazy. The Melvins what? are on the charts right now. No, no, they're not. They're no, gone. They, they went. They, they appeared in the charts last week. They You're did. Sh- Is shitting that fucking me. great? At number 200. Yeah. They, they sold 2,809 2, records, which was good enough for spot number 200 on the Billboard Top 200 album chart. Wow. That's great. That's really cool. Yeah. I, read, I saw that too. I was like, oh, that's that's some sort of sign of something. I don't even yeah. know what that's a sign of. <laughs> 26 <world>. years, 19 <laughs> albums. Who's counting, right? <laughs> yeah, crazy. All right. Well, thanks, guys.